Hi guys, my name is Caitlin and I am from the channel Kitty G on YouTube and I have been asked to come on book break today to talk to you all about fantasy and where you should start if you would like to get into fantasy. The reason I love fantasy and it's predominantly what I read is because it is an escapist journey. It is a realm, a new world, a different adventure from my normal life. It gives me something to have fun, to enjoy, to imagine, to get excited about and there's nothing better than finding a new book or a new series that just excites me and makes me believe in a world or believe in the characters or get transported away. I adore that and I absolutely love that feeling of just mysticism and magic and something not quite right but something very intriguing. So today I have a couple of different options to tell you guys about depending on what you might already like. So the first book I have to recommend is actually the first one in a series and it is this one called Malice by John Gwynne. This is a very classic inspired fantasy adventure. It follows a whole cast of different characters and there is definitely a sense of good versus evil. It has lots of different races, lots of different magics and lots of types of people in this world. So the mystery and the adventure is quite a big big epic adventure, it involves a lot of different people from all over the land. It's very very fun, even though it's a classic fantasy, it does have themes that are more modern and it doesn't just rely on the old tropes that Lord of the Rings has. It is an easy to get into series, I think it's a very simple story when you begin it but it gets more complicated and more layered as you go through and it's definitely a series that I would strongly recommend trying if you are an already a fan of things like Lord of the Rings or if you just want to go into a classic fantasy. This would definitely fall under that terminology and John Gwynne has since built up quite a reputation for himself by becoming a very well established fantasy author. He's been highly acclaimed and he's also bringing out some other books. This is a four part series but I believe he has another book that's just come out as well in a new series and I'm sure that he will bring more and more out as time goes on because he is great at building big epic expansive worlds. So if that sounds like your sort of thing, if you like Game of Thrones, if you like things like that, maybe give this one a try. Moving away from the big huge epics, if you would like something that involves romance or something that involves a little bit more light-hearted fun, then I definitely recommend Gail Carragher, who writes the Parasol Protectorate series and a couple of other series in this world as well. This book series is aimed at adults, it is a paranormal romance series and it focuses largely on one main character called Alexia Tarabotti, who is quite mad. She is very funny and very witty and it's set in a sort of Victorian era time. This does not hold back any of the characters in this world. We have a mixture of vampires and werewolves who live amongst the humans and there is some steamy time in this too. It's definitely a romp, it's definitely silly, it takes the mick out of some of the tropes you might have seen in other werewolf and vampire books so it's not the same as those and it definitely has a lot going for it in terms of humour. It is funny, it is entertaining and it is a series that I think a lot of people would really enjoy particularly if you are looking for romance in your fantasy books. Moving on to a slightly shorter book again but this one is very different, it's more in a regency period of history and this is called A Natural History of Dragons, a memoir by Lady Trent and this is written by Marie Brennan. It is the first one also in a five part series and our main character Lady Trent is a natural historian who loves to go around studying dragons. She and her husband at the time are both very adventurous, they like to go and travel all over the world in search of dragons and they have an excellent fun time doing so, however they also manage to get into lots of scrapes. There is definitely an adventure element to this, I think if you like things like natural discovery, like science and like exploration then this is definitely going to be a series that will appeal to you. It's not all fiery dragons, it's a lot more about the study of dragons and finding out their inner workings and really trying to find the science behind the magic which is really really cool and I definitely would say this is an easy fun to get into series and well worth giving a try. If you are fairly new to fantasy and it's something you're coming to fairly recently then I would recommend The Lie Tree by Frances Hardinge. This is a book that I just read and this is actually the illustrated edition which is absolutely stunning so I will just show you some of the illustrations from within this because they are by Chris Riddell and they are absolutely gorgeous so definitely worth picking up the illustrated edition if you do go for this. 
but this is a story that is quite in the vein of adventure, young fun kids adventures. It definitely has a lot more creepy undertones than you would get in say an Enid Blyton book, but it's in that similar vein of young kids going on an adventure, trying to figure out mysteries, trying to uncover what's really going on when the adults aren't telling them everything. And that is the root of this story. And roots are actually a large part of this story because it focuses on a tree which eats lies. And the more lies it eats, the bigger it grows. And we have one main character who is feeding it lies over the course of this book and it's just growing more and more out of control. Alongside this she is trying to uncover the mystery of what really happened to her father to make them leave England and they're on this tiny island that's very remote and in the middle of nowhere where everyone doesn't really like them. It's definitely got creepy vibes to it, it does appeal to YA and kid readers but this will appeal to adults as well because I just read it myself and really really enjoyed it and I would say that this is certainly a book that anyone could read, especially Especially if you do get the illustrated edition it is wonderful so well worth checking this one out. Moving on to a few of my favourite reads, one of the first fantasy books that I ever read and that really got me into adult fantasy was this one, Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is the first one in the Mistborn series and you may have heard of this because it is a fairly popular series. Brandon Sanderson writes in a way that is very easy to get into so if you are already a YA reader or a kids reader and you'd like to try some adult fiction or fantasy this might be a really good way into it because it is very approachable, very easy to understand but has a really really cool magic system. The magic in this world revolves around swallowing a vial of liquid metal and depending on what abilities you yourself have you can then burn the metal inside your stomach to make you do certain things, magical things like being able to jump really high or being able to fog people's minds. It's a really really cool concept, the world that Sanderson builds in this is absolutely fantastic very immersive, very easy to get into, but filled with vibrance and life and you can imagine it very very easily. So I would say this is certainly a series to try and this one is the first in a trilogy. It is a bit chunkier but I think Sanderson reads very very quickly so even though it looks intimidating it's actually a very fast paced read and I think you will get through it quickly and there are plenty more of his books out there if you do enjoy this one as well. Moving on to the final book I've got to recommend which is actually by one of my favourite authors and that is this book by Robin Hobb. It is Assassin's Apprentice and this follows one main character so it is not a multiple point of view story, it's actually focused on just the one main character and he is called Fitz. He is the young bastard son of a prince and Fitz really gets put through the ringer in this book and this series. Robin Hobb has a way of writing that I think appeals to people who read literary books so if you're already a literary reader or you're already someone who likes quite evocative descriptive stories then I do think that Robin Hobb is going to be an author that you might enjoy. If you like your characters to be incredibly well thought out and fleshed out then again I do think Robin Hobb will be an author that you can get behind. Her stories are slower paced than some of the the other books I've mentioned so it does take longer to get into her books and her world but she has an extensive magic system that runs throughout her entire series and the main character even though he's dislikable at times he's a very approachable and very relatable and understandable character which means that you can really get inside the mindset and enjoy kind of reading from his perspective about his life and the trials and tribulations and challenges that he faces trying to learn how to become an assassin. So those are the six books that I would recommend for getting into fantasy. Once you have read one of them hopefully you will enjoy it and you will want to go and read more but if you have any other recommendations that you think are great for starting places with fantasy please do leave them in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and I'm sure I will see you all very soon. Bye!